This is from Market to Table. I'm Lillian, and I'm here today with Nicole because my person that's usually with me just bailed on me, so I'm being upstaged by Nicole, who is so pretty. You'll be watching her and not me. We are doing things from the fall gardens. I am doing a zucchini. Nicole is doing a butternut squash. And she will be doing and chicken, chicken. And then I will be doing zucchini bread. So pull up a chair and enjoy watching us make goodies for you on TV. Nicole? Hello. I'm going to start today off with a butternut squash. Um, what you do is, if you get a butternut squash, the best way to do it is to peel it. I've used the vegetable peeler, and then you just need to chunk it. On a large baking pan, you need to you spray know, it. May I interrupt? Mm -hmm. There is a trick to the butternut squash, Well, then please too. tell me, because that's if the only you, thing I can figure oh, out. Well, if you cut it in fourths, it peels so much easier. Well, that would be easier than using a vegetable peeler on a That's huge butter right. swatch. Uh-huh, exactly. <laughs> yes. I just thought I would pass that on to people watching. See, age does have its advantage. Yes, it does. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> So you just want to spread the butternut squash all over the pan. You want it to be sprayed so the squash does not stick to the pan. And all you're going to do is take about four tablespoons of butter and you want to cut it up into small pieces so you can spread it all over the pan. Now see, I'm lazy. She's doing it the neat way. I just hold the butter in my hand and cut it over top of it. I'm not as good as with a knife. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's why I use a plastic one so I have all my fingers. <laughs> and then what you want to do is you want to take the uh, brown sugar and sprinkle that all over it. Now, when my boys were babies, I wouldn't add the brown sugar, and then it was perfect for first foods. I mean, right. my, maybe a little less butter. But. And you can go ahead and put it in a blender to make it very Exactly. Yes. I mean, but usually once it's cooked, it's pretty soft. So like True. after a year old, it's great. But my eight-year-old still loves this. When I was cooking it last night to prepare, he couldn't wait for it to be done. Um, Somewhere in my archives, I have a butternut squash soup. That is delicious. It's my favorite. Yes. Yes. I so, have not made that in a long time. What you'll want to do is just sprinkle the rest with a little bit of cinnamon, and this will go in the oven at 375 degrees for about 30 minutes. Um, and in the, in the middle of it, you would want to stir it just so it doesn't stick. While that's baking, I'm going to go ahead and toast some pecans for it, the butternut squash. So all you want to do is turn it to about a medium heat, let the pan heat up, and in our bulk section, we have just pecan pieces, they're great, or you can get them in the baking aisle. And all you'll do is place them in the pan. And you'll actually start to smell the nuts cook. So we'll let that go. And since I did make it last night, here is the finished butternut squash in your serving dish. And we'll just let these toast up for a few seconds. Oh, you seconds. can start to smell them. Mm-hmm. That's great. That with pine nuts. We always toast pine nuts at home, too, to put over oh, salads yes. and stuff. Super good. That's as good as roasting chestnuts. It is. I've never roasted chestnuts. I've roasted a lot of nuts, but not chestnuts. I've blown chestnuts up and had a mess. <laughs> yes, because you have to cut them, you'll know, make an X in them when you roast them or else they'll explode. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks so good. This is great for like Thanksgiving dinner as yes. a side. You know, that would be a very good option for sweet potatoes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. 
Very but I don't think good. if I didn't make my sweet potato casserole, my one son well, would be pretty disappointed. Yes, this is true <laughs> also. And Nicole's family has a gluten problem, so this is also totally gluten-free. Gluten -free. Yep. So it's a very good dish to serve for anyone that has a gluten problem. So they're pretty well toasted, and all you'll do is top it off. And then you can just stir it, and it's ready to be served. Very good. So right. I will hand it back over to you so you can okay, very cook your good. zucchini. Well, that's one of our fall dishes. Now our other fall dish is the stuffed zucchini. Now I have already opened the Italian sausage for the stuffing and the zucchini. Then what we need are three medium-sized zucchini which I have already washed at home so that I don't, because we don't have a sink available right here. So there are my three zucchinis that I am going to be using. And what we need to do is make sure they don't run away. We cut the ends off both ends. This way we have just nice squared off zucchini. We hid our waste paper basket under the table. That way we don't trip over it. Then, with the ends taken off, we cut the zucchini lengthwise. My knife is not quite as deep as my zucchini. I have trouble here at the one end. And when they are cut, then we take a spoon and we scoop out the seeds right into the bowl that we have our sausage in because we're going to mix that in with our zucchini stuffing. And it also makes the little crevice where we're going to go ahead and put our meat. So we do this with all three. And the reason why I picked that size zucchini is so that it fits comfortably in the pan that I plan on using. We lay them side by side in the pan. We do this to each one so that we have all of our seeds ready to put in. And that gives substance to our Italian sausage that we're using to stuff the zucchini. And it comes out very easily. We just take the spoon, scrape it down, and the seeds come straight out. And like I said, it makes the nice little crevice there for our stuffing bin. And the reason, as I said, I picked this size zucchini is because it fits the six pieces will fit in this pan. You can use longer zucchini and only use maybe like one or two zucchini, depending on how many people you're planning to serve. I find using the medium or small zucchini like this, you can serve, you know, one zucchini per person. And it makes just a very nice meal. If you use the larger zucchinis, you can cut them in half, and each person would get like a half of the zucchini then. Now, after you do that, then we start mixing all of our things that we have here. We've got the three zucchinis, 
We need one cup of breadcrumbs. And you can use seasoned breadcrumbs, um, gluten-free breadcrumbs, whatever type of breadcrumbs you want. You have the breadcrumbs in there. You need your garlic. And I find I cheat. I just use the minced garlic in the can or in the jars rather than mincing mine because one quarter teaspoon or one half teaspoon goes ahead and equals one clove of garlic. And it saves chopping or mincing the garlic. We also need one half cup Parmesan cheese. There's my Parmesan. It was hiding. And it makes a very nice filling for your zucchini. Well, it's a whole meal in one. Yes, exactly. Now, at home, I would not use gloves to mix this. But I'm mixing using gloves here because we don't have a sink and the sausage is rather greasy. So we mix this all up by hand. These are not cooperating. You see why we don't wear gloves at home. Just mix it all up, the sausage, the seeds, the breadcrumbs, the garlic. It takes a little bit of time to get it all mixed up together. The breadcrumbs will absorb most of the grease or fat that you get from the sausage so that really it holds together just like a meatloaf would. And I don't know if you can see, the seeds start to mix in with it. And then what you do is you just form it into logs and it lays right in the little crevices that we made in our zucchini. It can be mixed a little bit better than this, but for just for the lack of time. And you see, you just make them into little boats, lay them right in your zucchini. And when each one of the zucchini is filled, what you do is you pour a jar of spaghetti sauce over all of this, then you put it in the oven and you bake it until the zucchini is done, which is about, oh, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how tough the skin is, with a spaghetti sauce over it, and it is covered in your oven with tin foil. Then, at the end of the 45 minutes, you take the tin foil off and you put a half a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese on. Slide it back in the oven until the cheese is melted. And then your end product looks like this. Looks delicious. Yes. And it really is. And like you said, it's your whole meal, meal in one. You got your vegetable, you got your meat, and yes. your breadcrumbs are your starch. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Back to you, Nicole. All right. I'm going to make my grandma's Italian chicken with my own twist because when my grandmother would make it, she would use whole piece chicken, which my kids won't eat. So I use chicken cutlets. I'm going to start by getting the oil in the pan hot. Um, when frying, I prefer to use canola oil. I feel like it cooks better and olive oil can be heavy. So it's the breadcrumbs absorb it a little bit more. 
It's important to make sure that your oil is hot, but not smoking. That is always a problem. I will put the Finding oil. the good, uh -huh. the good temperature. And then I get busy with something and all of a sudden the smoke alarm goes off. Yes. Oh, my it's oil It's the worst on Sundays when everybody's at my house. That's it, yes. Never when you're alone. No. <laughs> uh -uh. Always when people will say, what is that? that or my fire, or the house fire is going off. Right. Um, also, if you're cooking for a large amount of people, you want to make sure your oil is clean. So maybe after two or three batches, you'll need to go ahead and trade out oh, the yes. oil so that there's not a lot of breadcrumbs on the bottom. And so, do you know, you have cats, do you not? I do have one cat. That oil is fantastic to mix in with their dry cat food. It really, really helps their coat. Well, our cat hides all the time, so we don't see her very often. Oh, for heaven's sakes. So right now, all I'm doing is cat cracking three eggs, and I will beat those. Um, I am making this meal completely gluten-free, only because my family's gluten-free, but you would just use regular flour and regular seasoned breadcrumbs. But if you are gluten-free and you're looking for a great one, the 4C gluten-free, which is mixed in with our regular um, breadcrumbs, is a great option. So, it is getting warm. So what you'll do is you'll take each chicken cutlet, you dip it in the flour first. The reason that you dip it in the flour first is so the breading adheres to the chicken a little bit better. So you'll go flour, to the egg mixture, and then to the breadcrumbs. And then you'll just place each, up. Oh, the oil's almost there, not there yet. So I'll go ahead and make one more. This is one of our staple dishes when I was growing up with my grandmother, especially when my uncles would come in from out of town and their college buddies would come. Oh, They would definitely. always wait for my grandma to cook. Now, I would do the cooking and my sister would do the baking with her because I am not the baker. Really? I, I don't enjoy baking. Cooking, I love. So I would cook with her and my sister would bake. Now, see, I enjoy baking more than cooking. I don't like to measure. And I realized that when you bake, you have to. <laughs> Cooking's a little more. Um, yes, you could throw it together. Yeah. Yes, I understand. But the thing is, so especially with young children, it's an excellent way to teach fractions. That is true. Mm hmm. So, what you'll do is you'll cook this chicken oh, about a minute on each side. Here. And oh. what I'm going to do right now in the in-between is in my glass baking dish, I'm going to sprinkle it with a little bit of olive oil. And what you do is you line the um, pan with celery. The reason why you line the pan with celery is so that the chicken stays moist while you bake it. And you can leave the leaves on and everything. It just cooks and gives it great flavor. And it also helps it not get so mushy because then it's not sitting in the bottom of a pan while it bakes. Yes, that's an excellent idea. So. Because chicken will get mushy in the pan. Right. And then the celery also gives it a different flavor as it bakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this chicken. And you only want it lightly browned. You're not trying to fully cook it because it will go in the oven for about a half an hour after this. And then that will finish the cooking. cooking. Right. So now that I have the pan lined with celery, I am gonna take a couple, probably one clove of garlic, depending on how much your family likes garlic. And I would see, usually use two. To, 
she has to cut her garlic for this. I choose it. In <laughs> One trick month. I did learn is if you take the flat end of your mm -hmm. knife, hit it with your heel or your hand. It's a lot easier to peel. Oh, yes. The other trick to mincing it is to grate it. Oh, and I have a garlic press, and I love oh, that at home. okay. Especially when I make salsa and right. yes. other stuff. So then you'll just take how many cloves of garlic that your family chooses to use and put that in the bottom of the pan. That will help put the flavor through. So then all oh. you do, and if I'm at home, I would probably set the, you get a plate, put some paper towels, let the chicken soak on the towels for a few minutes just to get the excess oil off. So all you do is that looks so add good. Add each Nicole. piece of chicken. Last year, when my mom turned 60, I decided to make this for her 60th birthday party because <laughs> I wanted my grandma to be like a part of it, even though she's not with us anymore. But. I didn't realize when I was cooking for 40 people how much work oh, that was going to be. Good so heavens. I was very happy to have this store yes. to use the deep fryers. So now that I've finished the chicken, and you can continue, but if I just had a smaller plan, you just take sauce. Now, I cheated last night, and I just used one jar of sauce, and then I also use diced tomatoes. It just makes it a little chunkier, right. and I like the chunks of tomato. If you have time to make your own sauce, that's great. Or, and you know, if you made your sauce and froze it. Right, and I do that during the summer, but my tomatoes right. did not do very well this year, so I didn't no, have the opportunity didn't. to make homemade sauce. So you just want to put a little bit on it. You don't want it to be saturated, because you want the chicken crispy still once it comes out of the oven. Oh, that looks so good and so, cold. Mm -hmm. Just spread it out a little bit, and what you'll do is you'll cover it with foil, and you'll bake it at 350 degrees for about 35 minutes. At that time, you want to take it out of the oven, take the foil off, add about a cup of mozzarella cheese to the top, and you need to put it back into the oven so the cheese melts. And this is the finished product. We have such nice looking we things do. with all the tomato sauce and the cheese. Exactly. And it's super Wonder good what the and calorie you can do count is on those. We don't count that. Oh. That's right, because we are known for taking all, all the calories out of everything. Exactly. Even it's in our chicken. bakery we take the calories out of exactly. the things. They don't count. It's only you're only flash frying it in the but yes, oil but you and can you're tell using canola oil, so it's more heart healthy. You took all of the calories out. For some reason I didn't. <laughs> no cat. But that's okay. <laughs> well, I'll hand it back over to you and All you can right. finish up with your zucchini bread. Now, I am making zucchini bread. And I forgot my bowl, so I got one out of the cafe and it's a little bit big, but that's okay. It will work. What we do is we take a cup of shredded zucchini so you know those zucchinis that went ahead and rotted at the stems, you can cut those stems off and grate the zucchini. And I just put them in little bags and stick them in the freezer so that I can have my zucchini bread all year long. What a great idea. Now I see that you didn't put the skin, so do you not use the skin? Well, yes, just how there's it's... some skin in there. But when you grate it, most of the skin just Disintegrates a little. Yeah. Or okay. it will stay in one strip and you just Pull throw it, it away. Okay. And there's a few pieces of skin in there, but not that much. Well, I told you I didn't bake, so I'm interested. Oh, okay. <laughs> then you take one cup of oil. And just for the sake of not carrying the bags and everything around, I pre-measured everything at home. This is three cups of flour, and this is really easy because you just dump it all in the bowl at one time. This is two cups of sugar. It really looks messy. And three eggs.
So it makes it easy that you don't have to yes. add different things at different times. It That's all be right. And this is one a, bowl and one bowl to clean. And this is a fun thing for the kids to do because it can all be done at once. Right. And really. And with that bowl, everybody can be involved. Oh, heavens <laughs> yes. Exactly. Oh my, yes. I did not, you know, that was my fault. I said, may I have a bowl? I got a bowl. Okay. And then three teaspoons. I don't know where my teaspoon measure went. But that's okay. I'll just wipe the half off because it three halves, well, six halves would make three. Oh, that was a little bit much. That's okay. Vanilla always, always makes things good. When I was little, we used to add it to our milkshakes, too. Oh, definitely. Like even a chocolate milkshake, it oh, was always super good. Yes. Now, the baking powder, we use a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, and three of cinnamon. For the sake of not carrying all of those, I pre-measured at home. So that's all in here. So we just empty that in there. And then we start and we just mix all of this up. And like I said, you know, in a smaller bowl, it mixes faster and easier. But that's okay because this is a nice big bowl and it will mix together. And you won't have a mess of the flour going anywhere. No, that. <laughs> this is why one thing I never use my mixer. I do it by hand because otherwise, you're right, the flour just flies everywhere. Of course, you won't know that because you don't like to bake. I have my grandmother's mixer. Really? Yes. Well, you know, one of but these. But my sister uses it when she comes oh. to my house. <laughs> okay. One of the shows that we did, I did not check to see if my extension cord was working. Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I needed the mixer. So it was back with Mark Arnold. Okay. The yeah, the sh chef. Okay. And he mistakenly said, well, you know, people mix things before they had electricity. And I said, yes, I know, because I invented electricity. <laughs> so, yes. So you could just mix it by hand. And then all that you do is pour into three or two, two lightly greased pans. And it's sometimes wise to flour the pans, okay. you know, after you grease them because it make, has the loaves come out easier. So I have my, I oiled the pans. As you can see, some of the oil is running around in there. And all what you do is, now Which this is help? going. Maybe I'll go this way. It would be so nice, thank you. Because like I said, with this big bowl, they sort of kind of went overboard with me. Now how far do you usually fill Just it up? Just about a quarter or a half, well about half. Because with the baking soda, in, you know, it will grow. And this again, and depending, you know, this is a very nice thing to give as a Christmas gift. Using the smaller pans, you can get more. What a great idea. We always look forward to when Lillian brings in our cookies at the store. Oh, and you know, for one of the shows, I think I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make cookies in a jar. What a great idea. You know, which is nice for when, well, one's going to be a little bit bigger than the other, but that's all right. And when you're done, then you wind up with loaves that look like this. 
beautiful. Thank you. They're my father-in-law's favorite, but I've never had luck with growing zucchini. My garden's too small, and it gets too big. Get it bigger. I've added a little bit of space, but there's not much oh. more space to grow. Well, I guess that's it for the show then, isn't it? It is. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next month. Have a great day.